to understand or agree, we'll obey your word. But let us make sure it is your word. It is your will and not our own. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Gl glad to see you. Uh, welcome to Ch China Gate. <laughs> well, whatever kind of a gate it is today, isn't it? It's craziness. There are a lot of strange things happening uh, about us today. We know that, again, the Chinese are here. Uh, we know about various other things. And we're praying for God's protection upon us. Amen, friends? And uh, for his leading, we want this nation to awaken to uh, God's word, God's leading of the Holy Spirit, God's laws. We want America to be awakened to righteousness. It's not happening right now. Let's not kid ourselves. And that's why we are in a lot of problems that we are in today. Amen, friends? And so uh, we need divine awakening. We need that divine Holy Spirit. Today I'm going to talk to you about um, Israel, God's vineyard perspective. And Israel, vineyard perspective. God has this perspective that was given centuries ago, actually longer than that, but for the Word of God and uh, the different things that are told us there, we're going to put it in that type of perspective for now. And you'll see what I mean as we move on in the sermon. There are some things I'm going to leave out. I'm only going to talk about a few things, and I'm going to go a little bit later on it won't take too long before we move into the uh, story of uh, Samuel and what took place there with Saul. You'll, you'll see what I mean as we move ahead in this particular story. But there are some things that we need to learn from what happened there still. We can't hear it enough. I mean, we just can't hear God's word enough. Amen, friends? We need to learn. And there's different things we learn over and over as uh, we read and re-read God's Word. Keep us steadfast, Lord God. Amen? Keep us steadfast in your Word. Pronounce your Word. Proclaim your Word. And I don't know why Israelites claim God's Word, and yet they will not obey. What? They will not obey. They'll hear God's Word. You'll see what I mean this morning again. They'll hear God's word, just like Saul did, but did he really obey God's uh, word? Did he obey God's commandments? Now, we are known <clears throat> today as God's vineyard or Yahweh's vineyard. Christ talked about in his word that vineyard, did he not? The Lord Jesus Christ gave us parables on the vineyard, and they are applicable, applicable also to what we are going to be reading today, although we really won't get into that. Uh, maybe we will eventually here, but we want to keep it on this one level here today. So <clears throat> we are to be fruitful. We are to multiply we are to be producers of righteousness. Can you imagine if we were really following God's word, God's people, and produce, really, really became producers of righteousness? What a change it would make in our nation, in our community, and our lives. God wants his vineyard to grow. He wants it to be productive. Therefore, God wants Israel to be fruitful, multiply, and that's also a part of what it means, this application of productivity. Lead with God knowledge. Are we leading with God knowledge today? Are we proclaiming God knowledge? 
Lead with righteousness. Lead with integrity. Godly character. Principles of godly virtues. Do we have that today? I don't see it, do you, friends? And yet, again, I have to say, people have been saying all along here, well, America's kind of repented. They put that kind of a concept in front of us, and I look at our nation today and I say, well, no, we have not repented. We have not been obeying God's laws. We still have sodomites. Hillary Clinton is still not in jail. I say that many times. Uh, you know, Biden should be in jail. Harris should be in jail. Pelosi should be in jail. Schumer should be in jail, right? We could go on down the line. And yet, they're in power today. How did they get in power? Well, there are lots of things that happened by which they were in power. I happen to like, I have to uh, veer away right for a second here, on Mike Lindell's new movie that he's been talking about lately, lately here. I hear that at least 20 million people have watched that video. I don't know if more have, have or not, but we uh, hope that documentary is being watched by millions and millions of people. I don't know what's going to happen there, but at least, golly, if nothing else happens, but they are awakened to the truth and that they've been lied through this. There's, there's been this voter scam. Well, that's all applaud that. But we need more and more that goes on. What would you say about Time Magazine with Biden? Oh, yeah, it's horrible. There are many horrible things. Oh, you mean, I see what you're talking about. Yes, they, they did that. Well, let's hope more and more things come out that exposes the truth and helps set the people free because, man, the people are in bad, bad shape. They need help. They're wondering. They're worried. They're fearful. And I understand that to a certain degree, but they're not in God's Word. They're not, their faith is not in the promises of God, and it needs to be. Their faith and their trust needs to be in God Almighty who will lift them up and uh, give them light and truth that they need. And, and they hopefully we'll start shining forth that light and truth. Amen? So I want us to move ahead here. Go to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1. We will uh, start, and there's more verses we will cover. This is big part one, by the way. Uh, we will get into the second part uh, next week. But right now, Isaiah... Uh, Chapter 5 and verse 1, quote, Now will I sing to my be well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. Boy, that sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds tremendous. Amen? But let's keep reading. And he fenced it, and he gathered out the stones thereof. You know, I read the law here. I'm, I'm re uh, what I'm reading is what, what many farmers have to go through. They have to take these rocks, amen, big boulders and even from their land to clear this land. Can you imagine the hard work that must have been years ago even? You know, and then they can get it cleared, of course, but they had to go through a tremendous amount of, of put a lot of hard work into uh, getting their land ready by removing the rocks and get that black soil, soil and uh, somewhat loose and growing some crocs, crops. So um, he said, gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it. So think about what is happening here. He built a tower in the midst of this garden and also made a wine press there and he looked and it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild 
grapes. Think about God's vineyard here and what we're reading. God has blessed. God has judged Israel. He has dealt with Israel on many different levels and circumstances over the years, has he not? And yet, we've had some horrible wars, some horrible things, some horrible droughts, periods where there have been no rain and, and scorching sun. We've had fires, we've had earthquakes, we've had, we've had volcanoes, we've had hur hur hurricanes, amen? But we've done a lot of things, a lot of things that happened because of the desires of men and what man wants and how man wants to control, just like today in the New World Order, Make no mistake about it, he wants that new world order because it's world dominion, world control, and also they want to control Israel. Israel is their prize. Make no mistake about it, friends. So God Almighty has carried Israel, has he not? Upheld them throughout the ages, throughout all kinds of situations, God has kept Israel together and he has cared for them. What's the proof of that? Well, we're still here today. Amen? We're still here today. Through all that's happened to us, all the various circumstances and conditions, we're still here today. It's kind of, I have to bang my head a little and shake my head a little at that. How could Israel have lived through all that? But God's directing them. God's still in charge. We are, again, his vineyard. We are also what? Well, we are caretakers of this land. Now, we could add to that this earth, and that's another aspect of it uh, that we could get into. How are we to be caretakers of the earth, though? Well, by applying God's law. Can we look at the world, for instance, and say, well, wow, we're applying God's law. No, we're not. When you have people like John Kerry, do you think we're applying God's law? No way. Or Biden or Harris and any of them, do you think we're there to apply God's law? We could be such a help to this earth if we were allowed to apply God's law and enforce that law. Now, I'm not saying that in, in terms of race mixing or we're all going to get together and we're all going to do this, we're all going to do that, and we're all going to be wonderful people by following God's law. God's law was given to Israel only. Amen? Only to Israel only. Do you think God knew what he was doing? Well, whatever you do, I won't ask you to answer that, but I certainly do. I think God knew well what he was doing. And he wants Israel to apply that law. He wants it to, them to live by that law. He wants them to be unto themselves, not out there scattered and mixing their seed and, you know, being all things to all people. He wants us to be together. When we were together in this nation, we were blessed. We had hard times, but we came through them. You know, you think about the covered wagons, we th you think about the wars and the cowboys in the Indian days and stuff like that. We, we protected our own. We helped our own people. We did, it's not that Israel didn't care about the other people out there, the other races out there, but we were unto our own. It should happen that way in Mexico, Right? It should happen that way in China, in Japan, in Thailand, in, in Vietnam, in uh, Africa. It should happen this way all over, people caring for their own, taking care of their own. And has that been working to our benefit, this New World Order concept today? and going in there and controlling them and using Israel's wealth mainly, 
It is wealth, money, and power to get this done. I wonder, are they trying to use Africa's wealth and money and productivity to get a lot of this done? You know, even when it came to China, I have to say, and you know it as well, this happened way back with Nixon, and then it really took off under um, Clinton, right? By what? Trading secrets? High-level secrets, technology with the Chinese. Could the Chinese take that technology and use it to their own benefit? Well, of course they could, and of course they have been doing that today. And they want more. They're over here today in the United States of America and other places because they want that wealth. They want that power. They want that uh, various use of the land. But we, Israel, Despite all, all our many problems and sins, we are Earth's greatest environmentalist, I have to say, in many situations, not in every situation. Especially when we go back to God's laws and are applying them to the land. What a blessing that is. <clears throat> Do you think we could um, be disobeying God and God blessing our land? No, he's going to send hurricanes. Uh, he's going to send fires. He's going to send uh, um, various things our way to disrupt, disrupt our way of life. To take that blessing called blessing away from Israel. And is it, hasn't he been doing that today with this COVID virus, for instance? Do you think we would have had this COVID virus if we were obeying God? Do you think they would have succeeded? I don't care what you think of what, what this COVID virus is, this real or imagined or whatever, you know. Uh, I tend to think it was created out of a uh, factory, a Chinese factory. But would they have had this success in locking down America? Americans would have had such a strong sense of freedom and liberty when they wouldn't have put up with it. They would have said, I don't even care if this virus is real or not. Our freedoms and our liberties and our God-given rights are more important to us. Amen? But are they doing that today? No. So Israel today is not living by God's law. Hold your place here. Uh, we'll get back to it a little later on. But we're mainly going to go now to 1 Samuel 15 and verse 1, if you would turn there with me. I want us to see what happens when kings get out of order with God. When kings become arrogant and act as though they are gods. And how is that mostly done? Well, by not upholding God's laws. And not enforcing those law laws among the land. Let that, that be a light unto the people, shining forth how it's done, sh showing them how it's applied, reading God's law. You know, the kings of old used to read God's laws, right? In the, it's in the Bible, right? right? They used to read God's laws to the people. Can you imagine if they were doing that all over this nation and governors and mayors and city councils, were saying, listen, we're going to apply God's law, we're going to read God's law, come together here, uh, even if you got on TV, they got on TV and did that. What a blessing. God would open up so many avenues of blessing for us. So 1 Samuel 15, verse 1. And now, I mean, go now and smite Amalek. Go now and smite Amalek. First of all, who's asking this? God is. He's saying, what? Go and smite Amalek? Yeah, that's what he is saying. Do you think, what is this idea then that God is all things, all people, we're all to be one, God wouldn't hurt anything, God's all about love, God is love. You know, when a lot of, uh, of these other false religions are presented, it's all about their God being a God of love, so to speak that their God will 
permit this and that. You know, that's why we're supposed to be tree huggers. Go out and kiss a tree, I guess, or some things like that. <clears throat> the Amalekites, in many ways, were Edomites, okay? They were Edomites. But think about it. God didn't want who around if he's telling this at the beginning or saying this at the, at the beginning, go and smite Amalek. What's he saying? Smite the Amalekites, right? Now, God has his sovereign purposes. There's no doubt about that. There's much we could say on that. He left them, though, but for Israel's ultimate good, here, we're reading, they were removed. What am I saying here? Well, I'm saying that God could have not done this to the Amalekites. But there's something about their religion, their false worship, and their sex um, religion. Sex is a religion, if you didn't but know it, to the heathen. I could go into things on that that would, well, scary. And it's going on today. This drinking of the blood is all part of that sex, sex religion that's going on. This thing with Epstein. All these guys flying around on Epstein's jet and going to Epstein's island and buddy-buddy with Epstein. I wouldn't doubt it at all, as uh, Cindy Powell said, Epstein's still alive. So, uh, the sex religion is going on today in many, many ways. This capture and taking of uh, little babies, killing of babies, that's going on too, but the capturing of these children and putting them in these sex camps and making sex slaves out of them. I hate even talking about this in a sermon. It's so abhorrent to me, but it's going on today. We can't be blind to it, can we, friends? No. That doesn't mean we have to go overboard in it, but it's going on. Going on, it says, and ultimately destroy all that they have and spare not, but slay both man and woman. Wow. But it goes on. Infant and suckling. God would do, do what? He would say destroy the, the infants? He did. He said... Not only that, but he went on to say the oxen and the sheep and the camel and the ass. God will destroy the animals. I'm going to call Peter. What? Um, there are reasons for this. I'm going to get into this late, a little later on. So just put this in the back of your mind right now. I know some uh, some people will freak out over this. Oh, it's so horrible, horrible. I'm never going to put my Bible again. <clears throat> but you'll open it to man's ways and man's laws as an example, I would say to people. You open your lives to murder and wars and and all. All kinds of things going on out there, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna trust God anymore. Would be some people's thinking on this. Crazy. And so I gathered the people together and numbered them in Telaim two hundred thousand footmen and ten thousand men of Judah. And so came to the city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said to the Canaanites, go to part, get you down from among the Malachites, lest I destroy you with them. So I'm not going to make a big deal of that, but they helped Israel. They were kind to Israel. They weren't even kind in a big way. They were just in a small way, helping Israel. But Saul uh, but God Almighty spared them. And because uh, God said, do this unto the Amalekites, right? And uh, 
Sorbo said to the Kenites, go out, get away, because we're going to destroy every one of them, of these Amalekites, right? And their animals and their babies. Uh, and he said to them, I will destroy you with them, oh, for you, I will destroy you with them, for you show kindness to the children of Israel when they came out of, the, out of Egypt. I think of Egypt like a land of Babylon, really. I mean, there was false gods going on there, Isis, Ashtoreth, you name it, what was going on there, Amen. And they were near Egypt, near Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And, and Saul smote the Amalekites from Havala until thou come to shore that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people, utterly destroyed all the people, with the edge of the sword, and Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and the oxen, and of the fattening of the lambs, and all that was good, and would not destroy them, but everything, says everything that was vile and refuse that were destroyed utterly. Today we are told again what? What are we told today? Just the opposite of this. They were all basically the same. Are we all basically the same? Do you think of yourself the same as the other races out there? I'm not saying anything against them. Do you think of yourself as the same? Do you look the same? Do your culture the same? Do you have the same values and the same taste? Again, it kind of cracks me up on the Food Channel today. They have more of these commercials about blacks and whites being married and guys kissing one another. And the type of food that they eat, they eat the lobster, they eat the uh, oysters, they eat the... Um, uh, Oh, these um, various kinds of fish that are, and catfish and stuff like that, and worse than that, that even. It goes on and on. They eat that. They're promoting that. Every show they can get a chance, and bacon, of course, they promote that and act as if it's the most healthy, wonderful way to eat. Amen? Don't they? But God said, no, destroy all the Amalekites. Don't even spare the animals. The question I ask today is, how seriously does Israel want the kingdom? Do we really want God's will? This was God's will. But did men really want God's will? Listen, folks. This is Israel's problem. They have not destroyed what God says to destroy, like the vow and the refuse. Do we have the vow and the refuse today? I was heard, I heard about last night even. And again, uh, listen to Biden, you know, and Harris. I can't refer to him as our president because he's not my president. I have to explain that again to some people that may not understand it. But I think most of you do. But we had Antiva out last night doing their thing, didn't we? Young people dressed up in their Antiva uniforms, even BLM that was involved in that. This vileness that's going on today, this refuge, Someone's planning this. Someone's paying for this. Someone's promoting this. Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen? Of course, I know most of you do. It's the ways of Red Edom. 
Listen, folks, this is Israel's problem today. In many, many ways, this is our problem today. We have brought this about by the false educational system. Does it obey God? Does it promote God at all? Does it promote the Word of God? Does it let you pray? For instance, it's way, way down there. And yet, we have promoted it way, way up here. Man has promoted it way, way up here. And the teachers' union, way, way up there, giving them more rights, freedoms, and money than they deserve. Amen? And yet, they have the answer, so-called answer today. What is their answer? To uh, abort their children? To let to teach them communism and antichristism. They're all for things like that, are they not? How horrible. But Israel is not living in obedience to the laws of God and God's will and, God, and God's purposes, are they? In many ways, Israel has waived their right to divine protection then. We what? We've waived our right. Well, then... That's the question. Why are we experiencing basically what we're going through today? What we've been going through for many, many decades. And it hasn't changed yet because, in a sense, again, I say, Israel, have you really repented? Nay, you have not. We have permitted lawlessness and vileness against God Almighty. Right? Let's go on to verse 10. Still here in 1 Samuel 15. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. God saying, I, I'm repenting of it. Now, I know God knew, knows about all that was happening. He's sovereign. But he's putting this in his word for us. For he turned back from following me and hath not performed my what? Commandments. Whose commandments? God's commandments. In truth, there could be no other commandments. Can there be? I'm going to simplify for it. There could be only God's commandments. Only as we go to those commandments and look at those commandments and we may use them in another way, we're still using them, but it's all God's commandments. As long as they're in keeping with God's commandments, they're good. Now, there's probably a better way that I could say that, but when we look at what Saul did here, and think about what Saul did here, he's not obeying God, is he? We'll get into that in just a minute. But we need God's laws. We need them bad. God's laws do what? They preserve a nation. They preserve a land. What do we have today? We have man's adulterous fleshly laws and edicts, do we not? And regulations. They come through with these so-called regulations. And uh, they say that you have rights and privileges, but only what we give you, Israel. The only privileges that we allow you to have. We allow you to only go so far, they have to be in keeping with ours, meaning men's various laws. And they're not really laws, are they? They're really man's regulations. Is it man regulating all kinds of things today? Well, we could also call them um, the man's privileges because man can take them away from you. Can't he? God doesn't take his laws away from anybody. Amen? They stay. But man, you know, because that's why I call them privileges. Man will take them away from you. It's, you know, the other day I went into the gun, uh, gun store, which was um, North 40, actually, and uh, he and I, the guy and I were having a great conversation, and he said, isn't it weird? You could buy guns. We have lots of guns. 
but you can't buy ammunition. You can't even find it on the shelf. Now, I don't know in some places you can find it, but it, you better buy it quick if you're going to. And I'm not saying here that you can save yourself through man's guns or through the ammunition. But the enemy is out there, whether you know it or not, realize it or not, but they're buying up these gun manufacturing places and, and uh, buying up ammunition, d ammunition, just destroying it. How many people are billionaires today? Rumsfeld, uh, Soros, Gates, you name them. Some of them are trillionaires. And Bezos, don't forget Bezos of uh, Amazon. You think that's enough money to buy these companies in various names even? They only have to use their, they can make it sound so official, so good, so wonderful. You know, we're just another gun manufacturing, we're going to buy out with our money, which means nothing to us anymore. We have so much of it, we just, they want the power, they want the control, right? There can only be those laws, though, that are keeping with God's holy laws, as in the case of Alfred's dupes. King Alfred, long ago, many centuries ago, had Alfred's, King Alfred had his dupes. And they were basically what? Taken right out of the laws of God. What if we had representatives today, Congress people and things like that, judges that were just writing down and enforcing God's laws? Here's what you're to do, here's what you're to obey. Let me see. What does it say? It says this still. This is what you're to do. And if you won't do them, there are consequences, not only by God Almighty, but, you know, we're, if we're, we have the chance, we're going to impose those on you in lots of different ways. So we need to remember that. This came from Alfred's dooms, and they were God-honoring. They were God's laws back then. At that period of time, King Alfred and Israel were a God-honoring people, as we should be as well again. Can we get back to that again? If we want our nation to be blessed, and we want to become more kingdom-oriented, we're going to have to go that way. Amen? And it grieved Saul, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul, so in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and has gone about, and passed on, he's gone somewhere, and gone down to Gilead. And Samuel came to Saul, though, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandments of the Lord. Was this a lie or is this truth? It was a lie. Can't they make lies sound so good today, friends? Right? In many ways they can make whatever they're doing sound so good. Don't they today make it sound so wonderful? Well, you know it. it we're all going to come together as a, in, in, in this world and be united. They don't ever attack the other world's religions out there, but they attack ours. They attack the Bible right and left today. Are they not? It's, and there's more than that I could say. You get the picture, though, what is happening. And why do you think we're in the condition we're in today? So again, so lied. He didn't uphold God's divine edicts. He could no more be trusted than who? Well, uh, we'll just use a few. Pelosi, Schumer, Biden, Harris, right? He could no more be trusted than them. 
Can we trust any billionaire also today, like Bill Gates, Souls, or any of them trustworthy and honorable? Could they be putting their money to godly uses and, and helping support God's law and helping, our, encouraging our nation to repent and putting commercials like that on TV? No, they're putting COVID commercials, more and more types of those commercials on TV today to wear these masks, to do this, to do that, to be compliant with the government. And by the way, even though you get vaccinated today, you're still going to have to wear the mask. I've asked people lately, how long are you going to wear these masks? Oh, I don't know. I hope it isn't very much longer. I said, you know what? You may have to wear them the rest of your life because you're going according to what man says. And man wants this control over you. Amen? Man wants this control over you. And he's using this mask in a, as a sign and a form of control over you. And if you're going to comply with that and obey that, what do you think else is going to come down the road? You think other things are going to come? Other things that they will enforce upon the people? You think you're going to be able to take your plane ride, airplane ride again, and not have this vaccination? How about even when possibly uh, going to grocery stores and things like that? He just said it, but may well happen. We need to pray about that. Verse 14, and Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheets in mine ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? Here's the lie, Mr. Self Importance, King Saul. And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites and from the people, and the people spread the best of the sheep and of the oxen. Oh, he makes it sound so good here, doesn't he? Makes sin sound so tempting. We did it all. We destroyed them all. But we kept King Agag alive for you. For who? For God? This pagan kept him alive for God? And, and we kept the sheep alive for you? You know? And uh, the animals alive for you? You know, sometimes I wonder a lot of times, and I think this is the case, God puts things there that we know. He knows men will not do. He wants to test them. Is he testing God's people today? Is he testing Israel today? I would say he is, even this COVID virus. And we say, oh, oh it doesn't, doesn't make sense in our mind why you would destroy the sheep, God. We're going to keep them alive. But we'll keep the best for you. Well, and I, again, we're going to go on here. We're going to see why. Uh, here's what it says right here. To sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly dis destroyed. Now, they're saying, we did this, God, ten years for sacrifices. Is that a lie? Well, of course it is a lie. Amen? Why do they keep Agag alive, for instance? Is it, were they honorable, trustworthy, dependable people? Tr God could trust them? Then Samuel said, said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And Saul said, he said, Say on. Don't they do that? Say on. Go ahead. Say on. Saul thinks he has Samuel, doesn't he? Go ahead. Let me hear what you got to say, Saul. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the breed of the tribes of Israel and the Lord anointed the king over Israel and the Lord sent thee on a journey, and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Until they, be, how did God tell them to consume them? Kill them all. 
well, I don't like that. It just, uh, again, it doesn't fit my, my heart. My, my, my heart says no. What? Uh, okay, let's say 50%. I'm just talking here. Does that fit your heart? Well, no, we should, we should all live and learn to love one another. Don't you think God's ways are higher than your ways and his thoughts are higher than your thoughts? Do you think man's ways are the way to go to them today? Again? Verse 19, Wherefore thou didst not destroy the void. Uh, didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? You see, friends, this was really what? It was really God's treasure. His tithe was to be consumed. It was to be as a burnt offering, friends. Look on here, it says in verse 20. And Samuel said, uh, Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Well, did he? Obviously not. And have done the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalekites, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But they always have, the, the, again, their excuses. The people took the spoil, sheep and oxen and the chief things. We kept the chief things for you, God which should have been utterly destroyed and to sacrifice unto the Lord my God in Gilead. You see, in a sense, what God was having Israel do could be tantamount to, again, a sacrifice. I think in a many sense that's what was going on here. Now, you can have your own opinions on that, that's fine me. But Saul wanted to use it for a sacrifice here to God Almighty. Well, God says, no, that's, that's not what I've told you to do, how it is to be performed. This is the way I told you to do it. Do it. Verse 22, though. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in birth offerings, and sacrifice as the obeying of the voice of the Lord. Now notice here, behold to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of lambs. Verse 23, for rebellion is as the what? Sin of witchcraft and the stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the voice of the Lord and hath also rejected, he hath also rejected thee from being king. You think God takes it seriously, this matter seriously? You bet he does. Well, if you understand, and I understand why, all the reasons why he did this or not, God told you to do it. But notice here, sin and rebellion is the same as what? Witchcraft. What do you think witchcraft is? Pharmakia is the same as witchcraft. Remember in sorcery in Revelation? That sorcery is the same thing as tantamount to witchcraft. So we are seeing witchcraft being performed today in this COVID vaccine and other things, and we're in a mask, are we not? Ways of men. And what does this tantamount to? Rebellion against God. Witchcraft. Pharmakia. Rebellion against God. Do you see this pharmakia, this... Uh, vaccination is a form of rebellion against God. We'll cure you. We'll give you the, the um, pharmacia. 
this witchcraft. Okay, now we're going to return to these verses next week. We're going to cut it off here for now. We'll go there next time, though. But we mean about the power that man has to corrupt, are we not? But to a large degree or on a certain level, it is these large today corporations, these banking entities, these Bullerburgers, these corrupt billionaires and such who care not for righteousness. Right? They're in this money, power, control, justifying their actions. The ends justifies the means. And make no mistake about it, they want to control who? The white Anglo-Saxon people. They want to control Israel. Do you realize again when they have Israel totally under their control, it's over. You think the uh, blacks in Africa are holding them back? Boy, they're holding them back, boy. No. Mexicans from Mexico? Are they holding them back? No. It's the white nations, Canada, America, Australia, Europe, and various ones in Europe, even Russia. Lots of, they're holding back what? Well, they're holding back the enemy in, in some cases. I know we're being used, they've worked for that for years, towards that end for years, and they have succeeded in a lot of different ways, but we're the only thing holding them back now today. Verse 3, And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of, Ju of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. So do that, Israel. What should I have done more than my vineyard than I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. What is the point that God Almighty is making here? That Israel has become untamed. They become an undisciplined people. Amen? A people who will not adhere to his Holy Spirit and his word. They will not listen to sound reasoning and judgment. They will be and act as their own little G gods. Don't they have, let them float around. Leave them alone. Leave these little gods alone. We'll use them. God can't be used though. God will not compromise. Thank God for that. He will not compromise his word, his ways, his will in any shape. Because he gave them to Israel, first of all. And until Israel maintains their sovereignty among the people there, so to speak, among their own culture and their own people, God's not going to bless them. Until Israel obeys God, God's gonna, not going to bless them, is he? Today, in many cases, when we, what do we have? The Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel. Tower of Babylon. They want to be as little gods, though, men, working in his own devices. Now, I'm going to close here because this, uh, in part one here, but this is the reason we're in lots of trouble today. Man has created his own problems. And, you know, the, uh, these various bad situations, and can they get worse? Yeah, they can get a lot worse. Or are they? They're bad now. But the, Israel almost acts like, you know, we want someone to deliver us, to save us from this problem. We, want, we don't want to do what it takes. God says, nope, I put you in this situation, Israel. I want you to obey me. I want you to do my will and, and to live righteously. Amen? I want you to do that. So I'm going to close part one here on that note. I hope, well, 
You may say, I don't know if it's in a blessing or not. I hope it is. God's laws are a blessing, amen? God's ways bless us. We need to get back to his righteous will, plan, and purposes. Lord Jesus, we pray to you. Deliver us. Deliver your people, Israel. Help your Israel people with your law and give them spiritual insight that they never had before and how they can take and apply and live according to your law to understand your kingdom, to understand your kingdom purposes. We want thy kingdom to grow, thy will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.